Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to school. In a minute, you're going to watch our special chapel service for the beginning of term. Uh, we planned, recorded and produced it right back at the end of last term, and I hope you enjoy it. But on Friday, of course, we received the news about the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. If this had happened during term time, and if we hadn't been in a pandemic, then we would undoubtedly have had a special service in chapel to commemorate Prince Philip's life and to pray for the Queen, the royal family and the country. As it happens, the recorded service you're about to watch is our celebration of Easter Day, so it's entirely appropriate in the present circumstances. You'll hear me say in the introduction to that service that Easter reminds us that our true freedom is in heaven. Even in normal times, for the follower of Jesus, life is lockdown, death is liberation. And because of the empty tomb, no lockdown lasts forever. Prince Philip, after a long life, an active life, a life of service, a life of duty, has been released from all its cares. Let us pray. O God of our lives, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for his love of country, his devotion to duty, and for his commitment to his family. We entrust him now to your love and mercy, and we pray for the Queen and all who loved him through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O God, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Welcome to the chapel for this first service of the new term. The last time I was here recording myself for YouTube, it was the end of last term, and it was, for us, Good Friday. We heard the account of Jesus' betrayal and trial, his death and burial. We switched off the lights and blew out the candles. We threw a veil over the cross and closed the heavy purple doors of the tomb. And then, like those sad and bewildered disciples at Jerusalem, we left not knowing what the future might hold. When Jesus' body was laid into that tomb, it was like a cave carved into the rock, and right across the opening, they rolled a, a massive, heavy stone, a huge boulder. It was a lockdown, one that the disciples must have felt would be endless. But now it's time for a new story to be told. The social lockdown that we and most of the world are still living through goes on. For all of us it's frustrating, for many it's desperately difficult, and for some it's heartbreakingly tragic. And although it now looks as if there's light at the end of the tunnel, nevertheless hovering around us very close indeed to some in our community is the bitter experience of death. Death which feels like the ultimate, permanent locking down of life. But the message of the empty tomb is that no lockdown lasts forever. It's now more than a year since the last time we all sat together and sang together here in this chapel. And this crisis has reminded us too that the hour of death can come unexpectedly. But Easter reminds Christians that in fact it's this human physical life on earth that's the real lockdown. Our true freedom is in heaven. Even in normal times, for the follower of Jesus, life is lockdown, death is liberation. And because of the empty tomb, no lockdown lasts forever. In celebration of that, we shall 
now restore to the chapel those signs of life and light which were removed last time. And this year, more than ever, they will fill our hearts with hope and joy when we remember that the times we're living through will pass, will come to an end. Because in the words of the hymn that we'll hear in a moment, Christ leads us safe through the waters of death to our eternal home. It's time for a new story to be told. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and greeted them. They came to him clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me.
Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! May God the Father, by whose almighty power Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him his risen life and bring you with all the saints to reign with him in glory. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and between you this day and evermore.